compressed tries. In the previous video, we had a look at standard tries. In this video, we will take the same example and represent the same standard try in a more compact fashion. So let's look at the example we took in the previous video. For this set of words, we had built a standard try. So this was the standard try that we had drawn for this set of elements. Now we are going to represent this in a more compact way. So first let us understand where is the scope for compaction in this tree. As you can see many a time there is a node and that node only has one child. Like for example here and here. So in this case you need to really ask the question if a node is only going to have one child, do we really need a tree to represent that? Or do we really need another node to represent that child? The main use of a tree when trying to represent something is the advantage that a tree can fork into two or more categories or two or more options to go to. If there is only one node to go to, do we really need an extra node for that? The answer is no. So wherever we have a node with ha which has only one child, we can combine that parent and that child into one larger node. So I'm going to draw the compressed try on this side. So I'm going to have the root. Now let's see where we can compress this try. We can compress AR into one node. We can compress LL into one node. We can compress ID into one node. Then we can compress ULL into one node. Then we can compress S, T and O into one node. We can compress C and K into one node. Just to reiterate why we can compress like this, because let's take this for example. When we arrive at S, there is only one way route to take until O. So we can actually compress it into one node instead of wasting time going through each node. So let's see how the compressed try looks. I have the root, I have B, I have E. And instead of A and then R, I can use AR. Then I have B, E. And instead of L and L, I can have LL. Then I have B, I, D. And then I have B, U, L, L. Now I'll go to this side. I have S, T and O which branches out into C and K and P. So this is going to be my compressed try representation of the same set of strings. So it is important to note that in a compressed try, we are only going to add a node whenever we are branching out. If we are going to have a singular path, we're not going to add a separate node for that. We're just going to add it to the sequence of letters we store within that node. 
so I said that only add a new node when branching otherwise add that letter to the sequence of letters within that node so this is how you can construct a compressed try out of a standard try now we will look at how to represent compressed tries so in our example we had six strings so I'm going to assume that these strings are going to be stored in an array called S. So in our example, S of 0 was B, E, A, R. S of 1 was B, E, L, L. S of 2 was B, I and D. S of 3 was B U L L. S of 4 was S T O C K. And S of 5 was S T O and P. Now, each of these elements of S are strings. So now I'm going to write the indexes of each of these strings. So all of these are going to be at the 0th index of their respective strings. First index, second index, third and fourth. Now that we have this in mind, let's take a look at the compressed try that we have developed. This was the try that we have developed. So let's see how to represent that. So we have our root. Now for each node, I'm going to represent it like i, j and k. i is going to be the index of s at which that word is present. j is going to be the index at which that prefix starts and k is going to be the index at which that prefix ends. So let's look at the first one. We have b. So we are first looking at the word bear. So i is the index of s at which the word is present. j is going to be the start of the prefix and k is going to be the end of the prefix. So we are going for bear. So i is going to be 0. Where does b start? b starts at 0. Where does b end? b ends at 0. So this is going to be our representation for b. Now we have e. e is going to be at index 0 of s since it belongs to bear. It starts at 1, it ends at 1. So this is going to be 0, 1, 1. Now we have A and R. It is going to be at index 0 since it's part of bear. It starts at 2 and ends at 3. Now we go on to the next word. We have B, E and then we have L, L. So now L, L belongs to the index 1. It starts at 2, it ends at 3. Now we go to the next one, BID. So ID belongs to 2. It starts at 1 and ends at 2. Now we go for ULL. ULL belongs to 3. 
it starts at 1 and ends at 3. Now we go for STO. STO belongs to stock, which belongs to 4. It starts at 0 and ends at 2. Now we go for CK. CK belongs to 4, starts at 3 and ends at 4. Then we go to P. P belongs to 5, starts at 3 and ends at 3. So this is how we are going to represent the tri, the compressed tri. So now we have seen how to create a compressed tri out of a standard tri and how to represent the compressed tri given that the words are stored in an array S.